Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of painting and in this instance it's the Oathsworn Burrows and Badgers Red Kite which is the guide just to the left hand side of your screen. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. But for now, let's get the kettle on. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've time lapsed the video so it's a little bit easier. Just save you staring at me painting slowly. Uh, to start off, we used a um, Corvus Black, which is a Citadel paint base paint, um, just to do the edges of the wings um, and just right at the the sort of edges of that, um, the feathers there, feathered areas. We uh, I'll go over this. Um, as we go but essentially it's just to give it that base coat really and I've already sprayed it with uh, one of the Games Workshop new sprays and I did think about using contrast paints but uh, I decided against it purely because I, I, I just like the uh, the way the, the base paints work still um, it's not really something I'm comfortable with yet the contrast paints so I just wanted to use the, the standard GW paints um, for these particular models plus that's what I use to do the rest of the uh, the models I've picked up from the rest of the Boroughs and Badgers models so it sort of works really to try and stick with uh, what we've got so the just to give you a bit of a background really on the um, uh, on the bird um, he's a red kite and uh, just picked him up from the, the latest Kickstarter if you want to see a little bit of an unboxing on those um, uh, of the Kickstarter of the minis that I had from the, the latest one just uh, go onto my uh, channel and you'll be able to see um, there's lots of videos on there and or it'll be linked at the the end of this video as well if you want to jump on that and have a look at the other models that we that I haven't painted yet which you can just see on the on the screen too so the the red card is itself is classed as a massive bird and it costs 40 pennies which is is quite low compared to the other massive animals um, but essentially you, you you are flying around you you're losing that little bit of um, not the strongness and toughness but he, obviously he's got flight which is which is pretty fantastic um, I'm really looking forward to actually playing with this guy uh, on the tabletop. Um, it's such a great little game, Boroughs and Badgers is. I'm sure he'll do really, really well. So you just get into the edge now. You can see I just did the tips of the, the actual tail. Um, I was looking at a, a picture of a red kite on my phone while doing this as well, just so it made it a little bit easier. So you can see I've just moved on to the next paint, uh, which is a brown. It's the Rhinox Hide um, that I've used. Again, it's a, a Citadel base paint from uh, Warhammer from, from Games Workshop. Uh, just to essentially go over the, pretty much the rest, not all of it. I, I did go over quite a large area with the Rhinox Hide. It's a great sort of dark brown just to start everything up and then I can build up from there um, try and, and, and try and highlight everywhere. I, I quite like going from dark to light. So using a light base coat for me is always a, a, a little bit weird I'm not quite got used to it yet a lot of people prefer to use a, a white or a cream base coat because you can see the the details of the models better uh, which is what I did on here just so I could try and pick up those details easily but you can see I, I straight away took it dark quite dark um, on those areas uh, and then and then built up from there essentially um, yeah, so you can see I, I pretty much did everything. I, what I did, I got a picture of a red kite uh, at the same time as painting this. It's, it's just off the screen, um, hoping to sort of try and match their styles. They, they all pretty much look the same. There's no, not many variations um, with the colouring of the feathers. They all look pretty much exactly the same, even though there's slight variations with red kites. Um, what I did here were, were the areas of the white, um, because they, the red kites do have some white feathers, but they have got like a darker tip to them so what I did I, I started dry brushing the the rhinox hide essentially just over those areas just so they, they weren't like very very white and it gave them a, a, a bit of a darker area 
Um, and as you can see, when we get to the end of this video, you see that actually I changed the way I did it slightly as well, uh, just with that white area, uh, to try and lose the white a little bit uh, and darken it down. Um, as well, I went over the rest of the all the black areas because the the black parts of the bird aren't actually completely black. There's like a brown tinge, so I, I dry brushed that as well. And the next paint I used was the uh, scorched brown, which is like a um, it's a, a, a essentially a, a lighter brown uh, than the rhinoxide. Um, it's quite an old paint, this one that I've got, uh, and I'm not sure whether you can pick scorched brown up anymore. But there's lots of equivalents out there. I essentially, just moved up and then I um, dry brushed the whole model just to get, give it um, give all the edges of that rhinoxide a, a, a lighter tinge. The next next paint I used was a Mournfang brown, which is giving it a really red ready sort of orange tinge. Um, just following again the the, the photo and the colouring of the feathers on the bird itself, um, and tr really try and g give that red kite that red sort of a feel. Uh, even though it's not actually red, it give, it does does definitely brighten up the model quite a lot. So um, next next up, I used uh, Xander Dust. Xander Dust is always one of my favourites, and I'll always find a way to get Xander Dust into a model when I'm painting it. And I used it for the bottom of the tail because it's a very very lighter area on the bottom of that tail. If you look at photos of red kites, and just round the around the edges of the, the some of the the feathers on the middle of the wings, uh, and just to the back of the head. Uh, the red kite itself has a white head usually, but this is gives it that um, it like sort of blends from straight from the white into the the brown instead of quite a harsh area. Next, I then I then painted the claws in Xander Dust as well, um, just to just so they stand out from the the body a little bit more. And I also did the the leather areas of his uh, of his armor, just holding his armor on as well, so it stood out from the the rest of the model. I didn't want to use a brown for that one uh, purely because it's it I think it'd disappear uh, within that. And I, I gave a quick coat to the the beak as well, just so that when I get to the coloring of the beak, the yellow it'll go on a little bit better. Next I did the silver, um, I, the uh, camera angle is a bit pants on this sorry but uh, essentially I used the lead belcher as, a, as my silver base coat um, and just coated the whole of the armour uh, all on his belly area and he's got a sort of like a shield style shape on the in the in the middle of his back as well that I painted you just like, literally put this straight on um, onto the model, well not straight on, uh, try and use a palette, a wet palette just to so you can get there, uh, so it doesn't clump essentially, and you don't get any streaks on your model, but you can just put it straight on there, uh, which is what I did with that silver. Uh, next, it was actually doing the beak itself. So to start with, I used Avalanche Sunset, and I highlighted with Flash Gitch Yellow. And I just essentially put the, the Avalanche Sunset all over, and then just put the tip uh, Flash Gitch Yellow on there. So that was the beak, nice and quick and easy for that one. I then pulled out the Nuln Oil, Trusty Nuln Oil to, to stick all over the uh, the armour to give it that shading. Um, and it, it worked really, really well. It was really good. Use your palette as well on that. Uh, and I also went around uh, the darker areas of the model as well. Uh, I, then I, I picked up the Strong Tone, which you can see I just used. Um, just to, to cover up, uh, uh, to go over all the, the feathers. And then I got onto the base, which essentially was, uh, I used a... Um, the the black color for the base of the the actual rock itself i then used the uh, dawnstone layer paint and celestra gray base paint just to, to highlight the areas of the rock and then went over the, the all the the soiled area with with the um the dark brown again rhinox hide uh, finally to, to finish off the base i went round uh, with a bad and black the um the other black the corvus black gives it like a gray tinge it doesn't look great so i used a bad and black just on the base coat and i got my um some super glue out and i started sticking some bits and clump foliage down i had some a few feathers uh, a few say feathers uh, flowers kicking around and i just popped them down and i coated the the pretty much all the base then with uh, PVA glue including the bits I stuck down so they harden up nicely and then went round with just a little bit of flock and covered the the soil areas it's really important to paint underneath the, the where you flock as well just in case any drops off it looks like bare soil uh, but there we have it that's the the model all finished a few close-up videos now you can see the the base looks really really good I'm really pleased with how the base looks he's not as red as I'd like him to be but I think it's a absolutely fantastic model I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, it looks really, really cool. It's really down to that Nuln Oil and Army Painter's Strong Tone. Um, I really can't recommend using these enough. The, the Nuln Oil and the, the Strong Tone paints, the Quick Shade paints from Army Painter, are absolutely fantastic. And they really do seep into the, the lower areas of the model that allow that natural sort of shading to appear. And it's really, really, really good. Really pleased with it, uh, how it's turned out.
So thanks so much for watching guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and comment on uh, what you think of the actual model itself, uh, make sure you subscribe as well so you can see any future ones and I'll see you in the next one.